Okay. No, it's gonna be a pink color. Okay, so. <coughs> okay, I uh, let's just say let's, let's assume it's all going, and um, so I want to talk about the Quran, and I want to start right from the beginning, and the first verse of the Holy Quran is Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, uh, in the name of Allah, the Most Gracious, Ever Merciful. One problem after the other, hey. Okay, <coughs> so as I was saying, uh, so tell me, why does God start by saying, I am the most gracious ever merciful? Sounds like showing off. What do you say? <coughs> well, uh, God the Almighty, he starts, uh, the Holy Quran starts with this verse, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, which uh, is exactly as like you said the translation that in the name of Allah the most gracious ever merciful now why did God the Almighty start with this these two attribute right attributes well firstly God starts with him right he says in the name of Allah right the name of Allah so first before even going to uh, gracious and merciful we should define what is this first part of the sentence mean in the name of Allah um, uh, well actually here we have to understand what does what is Allah right so Allah as all us Muslims we know that it is the name of God the Almighty like you know we are human beings and we have names so you're you are a human being your name is Khalid my I'm a human being my name is Munim and these are our names so similarly God the Almighty uh, Allah his name his personal name is Allah right but actually this discussion can go very long because if you look at the Kalama it has something that normally we don't know it has because if you look at the Kalama it says la ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah right but when you look at it in Arabic la ilaha illallah it's very profound because the way this uh, sent, I, I'm just deviating a bit, but it's very important to understand exactly the nature of Allah uh, as much as we can understand, or the name of Allah as much as we can understand. So when Allah is saying La ilaha illallah, uh, La ilaha illallah, so here basically it means there is no no being in this world, no being, no nothing in this world which is at in the category of a god okay except allah so basically allah is basically saying that i am very i am the most unique here in this in this world i am the most unique in this universe i am the most unique right so this or this name allah is only only used for god the almighty for nobody else it's exclusive to him not inclusive at all only is exclusive to him and now if you look at it bismillahir rahmanir rahim god almighty is saying that in his name basically which is allah so his name meaning in arabic the word ism it also it 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 means name but it means something that is marked branded right so here god almighty is branding himself in other words with the name Allah meaning that he his name is the only thing worthwhile uh, anywhere at any time so it's something very profound I don't know if people can understand right now here because it's very profound and we have to discuss uh, this at length I think because it's very important to understand actually um, the rest of the Holy Quran because this uh, phrase might seem very light but actually to understand the Holy Quran you have to understand this uh, sentence this verse to the utmost because without this you cannot understand the Holy Quran and this is why God Almighty has started the Holy Quran with this uh, sentence it's so important so basically God Almighty is saying that with his name which is Allah and the promised Messiah goes on to say that Allah is the embodiment of all perfect pure excellent things and 
it is such it is the being that is free from all sorts of impurities and all sorts of weaknesses right so Allah is saying that this is who I am this is my name there is no other name for me this is my name so is God showing off here no God is not showing off <laughs> and actually funnily enough sometimes I think that God Almighty is very very uh, God Almighty is humble too but not humble in the sense of human being humble we are humble because we are weak and but God Almighty is not weak at all God Almighty he is the strongest he's the most perfect he is mutakabir and mutakabir in Urdu is used for arrogance but in Arabic mutakabir means the one who um, who puts the arrogant uh, people down the abaser of the arrogant basically so God Almighty I think sometimes it's humble because God Almighty could have filled the whole uh, Holy Quran with him his name right every sentence of the Holy Quran could have been Allah 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 but it has not been there but every sentence of the Holy Quran points towards Allah so it is something very profound and it's not of course uh, God so Almighty So what was the need to say that I am a perfect being because ah, in, yes. in, um, in short I think that's what you're, yes. uh, you're saying that's what Allah yes. is that a perfect being yes, the yes. most perfect yes. whatever yes absolutely Why? okay because God Almighty is saying that at the end of the day I am the only thing worthwhile in this universe you should put all your powers all your senses towards finding me making me happy because I am perfect and you are not but I am perfect and it's not showing off it's not showing off because in in when God Almighty is talking right it's not like we are talking because because when a weak person he's he uh, proclaims his excellences that is showing off because a weak pers person a human being is still a human being he has weaknesses even the most perfect human being like the Holy Prophet peace and blessing of Allah be upon him he had human weaknesses so even he could not say I am the best un until God Almighty told mm. him so mm. right so do we benefit from knowing God is the best of course we do we do because, because actually wouldn't we know that God is the best if God is God then God is the best it's not even worth uh, stating yes well you see like <coughs> we were talking uh, before that you know this is imbued in us that there is somebody our creator creator uh, out there and but we don't know exactly what kind of creator that is <laughs> necessarily we know there is a creator out there and we love him right we love him but then our creator needs to tell us what kind of creator he is is he a transgressor is he unjust does he hurt people does he does he love all creatures or just some creatures does he does he um, does he uh, does he have any weaknesses you know so here God Almighty is saying that I am perfect don't worry my creatures I'm perfect you I have you can have full trust in me I am not gonna wrong you I, I am much I am infinite I am the first I am the last I have everything in me which is good you don't need to worry about anything and then God Almighty says I am Rahman and Rahim now why these two attributes right because Allah already says I am Allah and Allah means that he's perfect already but he is then precise in God the Almighty that I am Rahman and Rahim because these two attributes are in very very much linked to us human beings and to to the world as such these two attributes are what the w makes the world go round right now God Almighty has all sorts of attributes like I said and Allah in itself is the name right the main name in which all attributes are comprehended but Rahman and Rahim they are directly linked to us to human beings to any creature why <coughs> why number one Rahman means gracious right and in graciousness well the Arabic word is very vast but we translate it as gracious and even we say most gracious right which is right because Rahman is uh, a very um, superlative uh, word of superlative attribute which which defines uh, all like uh, the extreme of graciousness so basically God Almighty says I am the most gracious 
You know, I have given you things that you've not even asked for. I have given you life. You've not even asked for life. I have given you means of subsistence. You have not even asked for them. I have taken care of, of setting up the, the, uh, the earth uh, perfectly at such a distance where which uh, can only gain benefit from the sun and it's not destroyed by the sun or could be destroyed by the sun. And similarly, the moon is at its perfect, um, it's very much where it should be at so that <coughs> the earth is not impeded in its trajectory. So God Almighty is saying that this is my graciousness and this is what I do. I'm so gracious to you that you don't even r recognize. But now I'm even more gracious to you because I'm sending down this book for your spiritual needs and to fulfill all your spiritual needs. So why is God telling us He's gracious and that He, you know, He's giving us all this stuff? Because the great the attributes of graciousness <laughs> is the attribute that God Almighty, uh, through which a human being can recognize, uh, can develop a lot of love for God the Almighty. And let me explain. The promised Messiah, peace be upon him, said that there are two things really which attracts a human being uh, to his Lord and makes a human being love God the Almighty. And those two things are one, Ihsan and beauty. So Ihsan means basically graciousness, the things, the good things that God has given us, right? So it's graciousness ba basically. And, and beauty. Obviously, you we are attracted by beautiful things, right? But already, when Allah Taala, uh, Allah the Almighty says that I am Allah, you're already attracted by this because Allah is saying that I'm everything beautiful, I'm everything perfect. So already, your heart is already attracted to that. Right? So He's not telling us for all His benefit. He's yes. He's telling only for our benefit, exactly. and which kind of makes sense because why would an incredibly powerful God? Yes care about our opinion anyway exactly why would exactly. the power for god need to show up exactly. it doesn't even make sense exactly exactly yeah. and uh but let me just say this that there is a hadith in which god the almighty says that i was a hidden treasure and i wanted to make myself known now this is not showing up here god isn't that about the holy prophet no no no, no. Okay. That, that's about god the almighty right okay. but the holy prophet system was revealed this directly it's a hadith right. a kutsi Okay. Uh, and hadith e qudsi are those a hadith, those things of the Holy Prophet, which have been revealed directly by God the Almighty. Or maybe I misunderstood it in a sermon when the fourth Khalifa mentioned it. Maybe he made himself known through the Holy Prophet. Is yes, 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 okay. yes, 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 yes. Uh, okay. God the Almighty made himself known actually in in the in the best way. Well, in human terms, through the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, and and nobody else had that connection and could make us understand what God Almighty was more than the Holy Prophet peace be upon him because he had the best insight right and uh, so this this hadith like I was saying it does not show that God is showing up no it just shows that God Almighty wanted to make himself known to his creatures because that's his attribute he's so perfect that his perfect attributes demanded this that mm. he be, be known I should repeat throughout this program because this is one of the first programs and yes. people watching it like oh this is just a conversation yes. between two people no this is i want people to go onto the program go to loveislam.org.uk and you'll see the live tab where you can and the point of this program is so you ask questions mm -hmm. but while we're waiting for people to start asking questions i'll have to keep posing the questions yes so there might be things you don't like you might say me the host Khalid Safir here is not asking enough questions or is not being tough enough i that's why i want you to ask the questions anyway. no uh, and then uh, also we have to understand yeah. i'll come back to gracious and and merciful after because th it, that's the crux of the matter but this uh, showing off thing um <laughs> it's funny i actually think about these things <laughs> before you tell me yeah. <laughs> uh, two, two days ago <laughs> really? yeah well because i'm gonna ask those kind of questions i, d I don't know i yeah. don't know like Anyways, uh, so this yeah. showing off thing, right? What we for human beings, for us is showing off, for God Almighty is not showing off. Because God Almighty, He is perfect. We, like I said, we are not perfect. And we, if we start to show off, our imperfect things can come out, right? If we start to show off, our imperfect uh, deeds, our imperfect uh, morals can come out. Mm. Because 
we're weak, right? Yeah. But God the Almighty, He has no such weakness in Him, right? If He wants to make Himself known, right? There is nothing there that's going to become come out weak. There's only perfect, uh, per perfe uh, perfection in there. There's nothing weak in there. And that's the difference between God Almighty wanting Himself to make known and human showing off, right? And, and uh, now coming back to uh, graciousness, like I said, so obviously we are attracted with, with this, right? And we already have the love aspect, but what about the mercy, right? Why is God saying that I am Rahim? Well, the mercy is very, very key to understanding the Holy Quran because at the end of the day, God's mercy will um, overpower, will, be, will have the, uh, will overcome everything, right? And even God the Almighty says, even uh, the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, said that God the, Almighty, God the Almighty's mercy will even be to such an extent that there will be one day no person in hell at one time. And the, the doors of hell uh, would uh, make uh, you know, a sound, you know, when, when you leave a classroom, for example, and there's nobody in the classroom, the doors they just revolve, yeah, right? Yeah. And there's nobody there yeah. so those the doors of hell will be like that right it will be like in that motion doing that motion and there'll be nobody there because god's mercy will have overtaken everything and will have um, he would have forgiven everyone so this rahim here is telling us that we should never despair of god's mercy so how does rahim because you said something that was interesting you said rahim helps you understand the quran yes Okay, because the Holy Quran understand, helps yes. you understand God, but the Quran. Ah, the Holy Quran, but the Holy Quran. What is the Holy Quran? It's a mercy for mankind. That's what it is, right? Even the Holy Prophet says He's called mm -hmm. Rahmatul Alamin, mm. the mercy for for the worlds. And similarly, the Holy Quran. It's a mercy for mankind, and and we should always never give up. Uh, uh, you know, in never give up hope. And always think that God Almighty is merciful. But how is it a mercy? Oh, how is it? Because it teaches you the ways to God's happinesses, uh, happiness. It teaches you that God Almighty can forgive your sins. It teaches you to never give up. Always strive. There's always going to be uh, God's help there. And so it's a mercy, right? And But Rahim is also deeper than that. Because Rahim also, not only does it mean merciful, but it also means... It rewards the good deeds of believers. So it's a very vast word. But if you look at it uh, from a from a global point of view, yes, it's a mer it's mercy. It's mercy, and um, it's a it's a very merciful book. And um, these two attributes, at the end of the day, they make you realize how wonderful God the Almighty is uh, via these two attributes and via His name itself, right? and uh, so this is what it is and um, this uh, like I said it's a key to understanding the Holy Quran because if every time you read the Holy Quran or read verses okay it's very hard for normal people to always ponder on every verse of the Holy Quran but um, if one can on a daily basis uh, read the Holy Quran and link those verses that he has read with th this uh, uh, verse Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Then he would see how uh, vast the meanings are of this blessed book, because okay. it's actually a key to understanding the Holy Quran. I suppose that brings me on to something else, because you said any, anybody ponders over it, they can understand things. Is that true? Because it seems we, as with many uh, scriptures, they need these high up people to tell us what it is. Yeah. You explain the book. Why? I mean, if it was such a great book and as a book for the people, shouldn't couldn't the average person just bypass all these so-called important people and just get this benefit from God? The important people in Islam are not considered to be important necessarily in other religions. Now, let let me explain this. For example, in Islam, God Almighty says that the person that is most honorable to me is the most righteous right and that's what it is the people that are more righteous will understand the holy quran better so if a guy he's out there in the streets picking up garbage and he does that for a living but he's more righteous than say a missionary he will understand with the grace of god 
the Holy Quran more than the missionary, right? And this is the, the thing. So important people, no, you don't need important people. The only thing you need uh, to understand the Holy Quran is righteousness and the grace of God the Almighty. So anybody can understand it uh, in a sense. But now the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, yes, he was a prophet. And uh, the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, understand the Holy Quran the most. Well, that's normal because God Almighty gave him that righteousness which was superior to everybody else's righteousness. So he understands. Is it fair that the righteous people sh should know it more? Yes, it is fair that the righteous people should know it more because at the end of the day, the people that are going to be closer to God the Almighty are the most righteous, right? And the people that will benefit more from the Holy Quran are the people that are most righteous because they will understand more the realities of God the Almighty, the realities of religion. So it is fair. Or you could say another way, Yes, they had to strive in the first place. Exactly. And then they got the benefit. Exactly, from. exactly, yes. Because you have to, obviously, being righteous isn't like you just tick a box. You exactly. You actually have to sacrifice a lot of things yeah, even, for God. Yeah, yeah. And God goes, right, you made that effort for me, here you go. Yes, or uh, even take the Holy Prophet, peace be and blessings of Allah be upon him. He had to do so many efforts. He actually made the most efforts out of all of us, right? Uh... Like uh, the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, uh, he went to a cave for so many years to pray and asking God the Almighty to reveal himself to him and to pray for the betterment of his society. I mean, what bigger proof is there of uh, the Holy Prophet, uh, peace and blessing of Allah be upon him, the righteousness? I mean, that's the extreme righteousness mm -hmm. that he had. And uh, yes, that's okay. It. I mean, I'm sort of asking the questions in reverse because before I should have started Bismillah, since this being the first question, I should have, I mean, first program on this, I should have said, you know, some, there are some basic problems here. Why was the Quran revealed in Arabic? Ah. Oh. <laughs> why not? Why not in a non-language? Like, something humanity can understand. Bing! Like, like a... Like an ultrasound or something that kind of goes in your ear. Because this is God, right? We're talking about God, you can do anything. Yes. So why limit it to a l Arabic? Why not English? You know what I mean? Yes. Yes, God. Which is more. Yeah, no. God, God the Almighty could have revealed the, the Holy Quran in any language uh, that he would have cho uh, he could have chosen, or even uh, yeah, because God the Almighty is uh, limitless and he is not bound by anything. But the beauty of Arabic and the the special the difference and the 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 like uh, the status of Arabic is such that <coughs> it's it's the vastest it, this language contains the vast the most the vocabulary <laughs> i'm mixing my words sorry yeah <coughs> excuse me you can explain the most in arabic compared to any other language yeah it, it's it, it contains the the greatest vocabulary of any language the vocabulary is most vast in arabic than in any other language but what about some other kind of thing like uh, i'm not joking here yeah. but like it could have been a smell right and the smell could have sent lots of messages to the brain and that would have been universal yes but the thing is quran in itself it means something that's read and read often the the the, the thing about the holy quran it was something that had to be read and something that could have been memorized and something that had to be written also so it but these are limitations on the book oh oh uh, there are, there are limitations and there are not limitations in terms of um, our physical senses it's Ill this book is limitless because at the end of the day you can do everything with it it, it can be written it can be read it can be uh, memorized everything can be done with this book uh, but and this is what it was. It was supposed to be for human beings. It was not supposed to be for angels or it was so not supposed to be for other beings. It was supposed to be for us. And for us, this book is limitless in its scope. And the, the like I said... The but don't you see the, there could be the Aborigines or all these people who are living in the forest and they haven't heard of this book and the book hasn't reached them and part of the reason is because it's in different language. Now the thing is, the thing is, the Holy Quran in it, there are prophecies saying that this 
uh, book will go well this religion will be spread everywhere so obviously the book will spread everywhere so now what stops somebody from going to these aborigines teaching the aborigines the holy quran in their local language translating it teaching it uh, in their local language and maybe the g these aborigines they would derive more benefit from actually the guy who taught them the holy quran in the first place this is what god is saying at the end of the day you know so you're, saying you're saying he would benefit the aborigines would benefit more from the teach than the teacher possibly yeah exactly and also yeah. they would maybe discover new spiritual verities in that book which the teacher could not because they 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 have more capacity to reach uh, to to purify themselves they have more uh, spiritual insight maybe so god knows best so okay. so i think more interrogation is needed but um Let's say we're study one pass. I want to stop it and <laughs> get ready for the next program. <laughs> so no, this was complicated. Yeah, no, it was good, Jaloka. Okay.